Hello and welcome to this video about the Evans Jensen classification of intertrochantric hip fractures. So this classification was created by the uh, by Evans in the 1949 and it was modified by Jensen and Michelson in the 1975 and it is the most widely used classification for interstrochantric hip fractures in the present moment. So this classification is based on the stability of the fracture after close reduction and skeletal traction. That means if I say this fracture is stable, it means it's stable after close reduction and skeletal traction. And it describes fracture patterns as stable or unstable based on the integrity of the posterior middle boiling cortex. So stable fractures have intact or minimally comminuted posterior middle cortex, while unstable fractures has greater comminution of the posterior middle cortex. And unstable fractures after reduction can be converted to stable if the posterior middle opposition can be achieved. And finally, the reverse oblique patterns was considered inheritably unstable fractures as distal femur has tendency to drift medially due to adductor pull. So now I'm going to give you an overall view of the classification. So the classification is a three grades, where grade one is a two part fracture, grade two a three part fractures, and grade three is a four part fractures. A grade one have two types. In type one, there is, uh, it is non-displaced, and in type two, it is a displaced fracture. And those fractures in grade one considered stable in general. In grade two, it's a three-part fracture with separate greater trochanteric fragment, and that's for A, and B, there is a separate lesser trochanteric fragment. And those fractures in grade two considered non-stable. In grade 3, there is a 4 bar fracture, and it is considered non-stable. So now I'm going to explain each grade in more details. So, in grade 1a, there is a 2 bar fracture, and it is non-displaced, and it is stable. And this drawing explains this more. So it is a 1, 2 bar fracture, it is non-displaced, and it is a stable fracture. In grade 1b, this time it is a two-part fracture and it is displaced and it is stable after reduction. So it is a one, two-part fracture and it is displaced and is stable after reduction. So for grade 2a, there is a three-part fracture with separate greater trochanteric fragment. And if there is a loss, in the greater trochanteric fragment, this means there is a loss in the posterior lateral support provided by this fragment, and this fracture is considered non-stable. So it is a one, two, three-part fracture. There is a fracture in the greater trochanteric fragment, and uh, that means uh, there is a loss in the posterior lateral support, and it is considered non-stable. In grade two B. This time there is a loss in the lesser, there's a fracture in the lesser trochanteric fragment. And if the lesser trochanteric fragment is fractured, this means there is a loss in the medial support provided by this fragment, and this is considered non-stable. So it is a one, two, three part fracture, and there's a loss, or, or there's a fracture in the lesser trochanter, and this means there is a loss in the medial support. In grade 3, there is a 4 part fracture, and it includes the reverse oblique fractures, and it is considered unstable in general. So it is a 1, 2, 3, and 4 part fracture, and it is considered non-stable, and it also includes the reverse oblique patterns which are considered unstable because there's 
uh, there's uh, a muscle, uh, the adductor muscles are pulling the femur in the medial side and this makes the fracture highly unstable. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and like this video. This supports me a lot. And also, uh, I have another video about classifications. You might want to check them out uh, if you if you uh, if you want. Thank you.